What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the show. So happy Friday, everyone. Uh, I, I want to talk about this because I think this is very important for us to talk about. Uh, I've had some people ask me questions about Social Security and Medicare and the politicians that support Social Security and the politicians that don't support Social Security. I know in the last few videos I've been talking about this. Uh, we are close to an election. I just want you guys to have all the information that you need when it comes to going to the polls and, and making an educated uh, vote when it comes to our midterm election. So what I've done is I'm going to show you guys this website and I'm going to post a link in the description as well as in the comments at the very, very top of the comments. Uh, there'll be a, a pin tag and you'll be able to go there and you can go to this website and find out how the politicians how the politicians support Social Security in your state, both politicians in the House of Representatives as well as in the Senate. Uh, so that's what we're going to focus on today. But first off, you guys can do me a favor. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification, and then click all. That way you'll get notified anytime I put out a video. We do daily videos here. So if you click all, you should be getting notifications every day. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll just move over to the website here. So now I talked about this website a couple of days ago. Okay, it's a National Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare. Okay, so the this is a very very good website, and it's a nonprofit. I would I would highly highly recommend that you guys go over there and read some of the articles because they're very very informative when it comes to Social Security, Medicare, retirement. Okay, so uh, that's my little plug there. I'm not being sponsored by them or anything like that. I'm just, I, when I find a good website and I find good information, I do like to share that with you guys. And I also like to show you where I'm getting my information from as well. Uh, that way it's just not uh, some people say, because you, you'll have a lot of people, especially on YouTube, this this happens a lot. It, it actually happens on on uh, TV as well. You're watching MSNBC, CNN, Fox, you'll hear, you know, uh, someone reported that or, uh, you know, a source said that and this kind of stuff. I'm showing you guys where I'm getting the information from. OK, and that's that's the way it should be. That way you guys can fact check what I'm saying. And if you think, you know what? No, I don't think you're interpreting that wrong. You can look at it for yourself and see uh, what I'm looking at. OK, so let's uh, let's go ahead and move down here. And I want to zoom this in just a little bit more. So hopefully you guys will be able to see it just a little bit better there. Uh, it's always hard when I'm, I'm shooting these videos and I have the side by side because it's hard for you guys to see exactly uh, what I see, but uh, I'll do my best here. So this is the 117th Congress. So that's 2021 and 2020, uh, 2021 and 2022. And uh, this is the, the scorecard. Now, what I like about this is first off, they're going to show you all the different states, of course. And what I like about it is you can go state to state. And I, I find that very, very, uh, very beneficial. So I can click on California. That's where I live. And then I can click the scorecard here and it will download. Uh, let's see. Actually, it downloaded the whole scorecard. So we'll look at the whole scorecard. So I'm not going to show you everything on here because I want you to go over to this website and uh, check it out. Because like I said, it, it, it's got a lot of information on the website. But we will zoom in a little bit so you can see this because... It's very, very hard to read. Very small print here. So it gives you this PDF. And from the PDF, then you can start looking at some of these different uh, politicians. Okay, so uh, the representatives here, then you have the senators at the bottom. And then if you move over here, then you'll see their actual score. Okay, so you see all these zeros. That means that they didn't vote on any bill that they didn't vote for any bill that was was uh, beneficial to uh, people on Social Security. Now, understand, this is a nonprofit organization. They're doing the research and so that is what they came up with, okay? So you might have other, you might look at some other sources and they might have different, uh, different. Um, it might be different, okay? So not gonna be the, same, the exact same. What they did is they took some of these popular bills that went through Congress in the last two years and they judged them on those bills, okay? Those bills alone. And a lot of those bills that we were looking at, just even the last bill that we saw, the. Uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, it did have some benefits for Medicare as far as negotiating uh, drug prices. And so if they voted no on that, then they'll say that they voted no on that, and then they're going to give them their percentage, okay? So you have Terry, uh, Terry, was it Sewell? And he's a representative. He's the only Democrat. He's the only Democrat representative in Alabama. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So he's the only one that got 100%. And then you do have a senator here, Shelby. Uh, Shelby got 25%. So apparently he voted yes on something. 
Okay, vote vote numbers. Now it doesn't tell you all the info. You're gonna have to go through this, and I, I I can't take the time to go through every one, but you're gonna have to go through to see exactly. Okay, vote six. What bill was that that he voted for? Uh, but you do have uh, you do have him. It says not a candidate for reelection, so he's not running for reelection, which is unfortunate, right? At least he voted yes on one. Uh, so we did have a Republican that voted yes on one bill that benefited Social Security. Okay. Uh, then you move down here, Lisa Murkowski. So we're now into, uh, what is this? Uh, Alaska. Okay. Uh, I should have known that. Uh, so anyway, so you have the two. You have uh, Lisa, Lisa Murkowski and then Dan Sullivan. Lisa Murkowski did get 25%. Uh, percent. She voted yes on one of the bills. It was probably, I'm not sure. I'm actually not sure what bill that is. The only one I can think of is is the the infrastructure bill, that first infrastructure bill. Uh, I can't remember what it had in there that benefited Social Security or Medicare, but uh, that's the only bill that I can see that she voted for, that I know that she voted for. Uh, so we can move on down the list here, and I'm getting the states out of here. Okay, so Arizona, Arkansas. So I, like I said, I'm not going to go through every politician, but I just want to show you they're all here, all the different states. Look at California. Wow. Um, and so go through this. Find your politicians in your district, find your senators, and just see how they scored when it came to uh, this, this uh, scoring that they're doing, this National Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare, okay? And I'm going to say this once again, and, and probably even more before the election, when it comes down to it, you need to know what your politici- how your politicians feel about Social Security and how they feel about Medicare and how they feel about anything that, that you're, you're passionate about, because you need to, to be able to hold these politicians accountable. And if they make promises, you need to be able to hold their feet to the fire and say, hey, this is the promise that you made. Uh, one of the good things is, uh, you know, you have situations where, uh, yes, it's only one person and they can't do it on their own. But if they make a promise and then they go against their promise and vote against something that they said that they, that they wanted to, to uh, support, that's a problem. Okay, And what I mean by that is, uh, let, I'll just we'll, we'll we'll put it out there. Let's say there's a politician that says they are for a two hundred ra- two hundred dollar raise for Social Security, okay? And then it comes down to voting time, and they vote against the two hundred dollar raise for Social Security. Well, that's a problem. That's a problem because they made the promise saying that they would support a raise, a two hundred dollar raise for Social Security. That is different to me than a politician that says that they're for a $200 raise for Social Security, but it's never brought to the floor and they never vote on it. If they never vote on it, then how can this politician uh, show their support for a $200 raise for Social Security if it doesn't go through, if it doesn't go through Congress? Okay, so uh, that, that's, it's different to me. Now, I do understand, like, if you have all these politicians coming out saying that they're for this and they're for this, they need to come together and figure out a way to get this on the floor and vote on it, but it's uh, y- you have two different two different things going on here. You have one politician that's saying that they're for something and and they would vote for it if it was on the floor, and then you have another politician saying they're for something, and then when it comes onto the floor, they vote against it. So, so you need to know how these politicians feel about Social Security and Medicare if that is your major concern. And now I want to talk about something else too. I want to talk about the the presidential power, and I, I've talked about this in several videos. Uh, previously. I haven't talked about it in a while, but we need to understand what the president has the power to do and what he does not have the power to do. Okay. And currently the president doesn't have a lot of power when it comes to social security and Medicare. We're even seeing challenges to this whole student loan cancellation where the president uh, through an executive order is it wants to cancel student loans and now it's on pause and they're trying to figure out how they're going to move forward with this. But the president doesn't alone, the president doesn't have very much power. Okay, it's we have a balanced government. So Congress has to legislate. And so if they choose not to legislate, it's not the president's fault that they're not legislating. It's their fault that they're not legislating. But the the, the reality is we all look at the president because it's easy. We all know who the president is. A lot of people don't even know who represents them in Congress. And that's pretty sad, but it's the truth. Uh, there was there was a friend of mine. I, we were we were having a, a discussion going back and forth. Uh, this is when I was working. And uh, we, we, we just start talking about different things, different topics when it came to politics and stuff like that. And I asked him, you know, straight up, do you, who's your politician? You know, who's, who's your representative? And he didn't know who his representative was. 
And so here I am having a back and forth over the issues, and this person's complaining about this and complaining about that that's going on in, in the country, and this is several years ago, but he didn't know who was representing him in Congress. So he doesn't even know who to blame. So automatically he's going to blame the president, right? That's the way it goes because he doesn't know that this person, this legislator, this person that's supposed to be uh, putting these, you know, helping passing these bills to make the U.S. a better place, he doesn't even know who that person is. So how do you hold that person accountable? And I think there are a lot of people out there that are the same way. They have no idea who, who represents them in Congress. Some of them don't even know who their senators are. And senators, I mean, they're, they're, you know, it's a statewide uh, race, Senate race. You should at least know who your senators are. There's only two of them in each state. The representatives, eh, you know what? I can, I can understand that because there are a lot of representatives. But when it comes to the, the senators, you should at least know who your senators are. And so all I'm saying is when it comes down to it, know your politicians, know how they feel about certain issues, and then hold them accountable. And it doesn't hurt to write a letter. It doesn't hurt to call the office. I've In my description, and I've had this up for, for over two years now, there's a switchboard number. You call that switchboard number and tell them who your representative is, and they will patch you through to their office, Okay. They, they might not pick up the phone, but leave them a message. Let them know how you feel about Social Security, how you feel about Medicare, how you feel about a $200 raise for Social Security. That's the way you get their attention. That's what corporations do. Corporations get their attention because they're in their office. And of course, they're helping them with their campaigns and things like that. But guess what? A corporation is only one. If we have a lot of people that are calling this switchboard, calling these same politicians and saying, hey, we want a $200 raise for Social Security. I'm just giving that as an example. Well, that's going to mean something to these politicians if they want to remain in office. And most of them do. And so that's what has to happen. You have to get out there. You have to say, OK, you know what? This is my politician. I looked at this. And if you look at this, this website here, you look at this PDF that, I, that I'll uh, that you guys will, will be able to to download. Find out that information. Oh, you know what? They voted no on all of these different these different bills that could have helped Social Security and Medicare. Why did they vote no on all these? I don't know. Why don't you call them and say, hey, I just saw this information and I'm wondering why you voted no on all these different bills to help Social Security and see if they respond. If they don't respond, that's fine. But you know what? They're at least going to get that message. And if enough people are saying the same thing and they're getting that message, then guess what? Maybe they'll start thinking, hey, you know, my job's on the line. Maybe we better figure out something to do when it comes to Social Security, some type of reform, some type of help. We need to do something because there are too many people that are calling and saying the same thing. So that's my two cents when it comes down to it. And I just wanted to, to give you guys this information because people have been asking me about this. And I did mention in my last video, let me know if you know of any Republican that supports an expansion of Social Security, a $200 raise or any type of expansion of Social Security and Medicare. Let me know in the comments below. I didn't get any one. I didn't see any, any names down there. Uh, but this might help you go through the list and maybe you'll see some different politicians and you can look into, uh, look into them more and see how they feel about Social Security and Medicare. If you guys have any questions, post them down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.